you should play with the problems just like cricket. How it is possible? Study and cricket. People love to play cricket, love to play sports, and many people they don't love to study as compared to that much they love they put towards sports. But I say you should study, you should play, the, you should solve the problems the way you play any sports. You should play with the problems. How to play with the problems? In Fiji, what we used to do is that we ask students to create new problems. Why we ask the students to create new problems? There are enough questions being there. There are a lot of problems are there with us. Then also we ask the student to create their own problems, own questions. Student create their own problems. They solve the problem. They get satisfaction. They give the problem to other student as a challenge. So can you solve this problem? By this process, a competitive spirit gets developed, and everybody start making their own questions. Then. That become a fun. Solving problem become a fun. When you solve the problems, then you can solve the problem. When somebody has given you problem to you, you can solve the problem with a fearful mind. But when you create a problem, new problem, your fear goes out. When somebody create a new problem, he can understand the psychology behind the question setter's mind. Once you understand the psychology. Then you know the all the rules of the all the rules of the game, and the, all the rules of the games are known to you. It is very easy to crack the rules. When a question setter make a question, when a creator of a problem create a problem, then he gives some data and asks some questions out of those those data. Or if he asks a particular question answers, then he think that what are the data I should be giving. When you master the technique of creating problems, then you know yes, these are the data that we given. Then he must be asked in this end result, or this has been asked at the final form, final answer. Then what are the things required for this? Before you face a particular challenge, face a problem, then think that how the problem has been created in life also. When a problem come to us, analyze why this problem has been created. Let's go back to the root. The basic. Once you go to the root cause of the problem and start working on solving the problem, then solution come very easy. I said that you play with the problems just like cricket. In cricket, what happens? Sometimes we'll bowl and ask somebody to bat, and some other time we ask somebody to bowl and we are at the striking end. When we face a ball, we can play offensively. We can play defensively. The choice is ours, and that depend upon your expertise and the circumstances. Similarly, when a problem is given to you, some some student they solve the problem offensively, and some people they solve the problem defensively. When they try to solve the problem defensively, they are afraid. They are likely to that yes, I may fail. But when you defensively solve the problem, then you are confident. The first thing, when the problem given to you, you start thinking that yes, I know the answer, I can solve the problem. I have practiced so many problems, then definitely I will be able to solve the problem. And you start attempting the problem. When you start attempting the problem, and that is called the offensive problem solving. When you afraid the problem, three times, four times, you are wondering over the problems, thinking that I may not be able to solve. Time is going out. So much lady there. What will happen to me? This is called. I want to save yourself. When you want to save yourself in the examination, it is called defensive problem solving. So why people? Some people solve offensively. Some people solve this play defensively. The thing is that single thing is the basics. If the basics are clear, then you can solve any problem. Your basics are not clear, and you start switching over concept to concept. You are switching over, then the likelihood that you may fail in solving the problem. You know, in the swimming pool, 
there is a shallow side and there is a deeper side. Okay. And those people who know the swimming, they enter the swimming pool and they start swimming. And the people who do not know, they go to the pool and they watch from outside. And they will be asking a lot of questions to themselves and to the people inside. How depth it is? Is it 3 feet depth? Is it like this? Will it be above my head? A lot of questions they will be asking. But the people who know the swimming, the depth is immaterial. Does the basic of swimming changes in the shallow side and deeper side? Is the basic same or different? Swimming basics are different in shallow side and deeper side? See? If you know the swimming, then you can solve the easy problem also, you can solve the difficult problem also. If you don't know the basics, maybe in the shallow side where your feet is touching the ground, you'll be able to survive. But when the depth increases, there you must know the basics of swimming. They are no, nothing else happened. So there are some problems which are easy type problems are there, which is school level problems are there, where your basics may not be clear, but you will be able to solve the problem. But that, that doesn't guarantee that your basics are clear. When you are not able to solve the difficult problem, ask yourself, is all my basics clear? If you ask question to yourself, you will get the answer. And you start making your basics clear, you start attempting the question in a fresher way, and the courageous mind, then you will self, you'll see that, Definitely you will be able to solve the problem. Keep your basics clear and throw out the fear.